When training reinforcement learning policies in multi-agent settings, it is important that agents are able to communicate their intentions to each other. Consider this scenario, where two robots are each headed towards the same destination. If they communicate with each other, then they can coordinate to avoid a potential collision. Now consider what might happen if the robots do not communicate. They might move in the same direction, resulting in a debilitating collision. Or they might actively avoid colliding with each other, which results in indecisive and inefficient behavior. Or they might happen to choose the same subtask, which leads to an overlapping of efforts. In all these cases, the robots can still get the job done, but they are not able to coordinate very well without knowing each other's intentions. So how can we encode intentions in multi-agent deep reinforcement learning? In current methods, it is common to train policies that take in ground truth state information, such as agent poses and object poses. Naturally, intentions can also be encoded using state information such as the XY target locations of other agents. These intentions are provided to the policy alongside the observations, which enables agents to choose actions based on the intentions of other agents. However, these methods typically require massive amounts of data to train and are often limited to simulation environments where ground truth state information is available. But what if we don't have access to the ground truth state? and instead want to train agents directly on visual observations. The solution we propose is spatial intention maps, a new intention representation for vision-based multi-agent deep reinforcement learning. The main idea is to spatially encode the intentions of other agents into a 2D map that is aligned with the visual observations. The intention map is fed into a fully convolutional Q network which predicts Q values for a dense set of spatial actions. The agent then executes the action with the highest Q value. Our idea builds upon the spatial action maps framework in which a fully convolutional Q network is trained to map visual observations to a Q value map. The dense action space is spatially aligned with visual observations. This spatial alignment enables highly sample efficient training of reinforcement learning agents. In this work, we follow the same insight and spatially encode intentions in the same domain as the observations. This means that action predictions and encoded intentions are both spatially anchored on visual features of the scene. We study the use of spatial intention maps on two tasks. The first is the foraging task, where the goal is to move all objects to the red receptacle in the top right corner. We look at several robot types with different foraging capabilities. The ones shown here are lifting robots, which can pick up objects and carry them. The second task is search and rescue, where the goal is to find all objects in the environment and rescue them. Here we show teams of lifting robots that were trained for foraging in several different simulation environments. Some of the environments have bottlenecks, such as doorways and tunnels, which force the robots to coordinate taking turns. Since the robots know each other's intentions, they are able to choose actions that avoid conflict with other robots. We observe that the robots can smoothly complete the task while coordinating to minimize collisions. We also test our trained policies on real hardware. We use fiducial markers to mirror the real environment inside the simulation. This allows us to run trained policies directly on the real robots with no fine tuning. Note that the robots do not have access to the marker poses. The markers are only used to mirror the environment. Here we highlight an interesting emergent strategy in a small divider environment. We observe that the robots learn to move single file in a circle around the center divider. This strategy automatically emerges through training and turns out to be a very effective and efficient strategy for this environment. We also train teams of pushing robots in several different environments. 
we see that they are able to effectively divide the work up with different robots pushing different objects. They are also able to coordinate to avoid collisions at the receptacle in the top right corner. And here we show the pushing policy running on real robots. We observe that in the small divider environment, the pushing robots learn the same emergent strategy as the lifting robots. By moving single file in a circle and pushing objects along the walls, they are able to efficiently complete the task. We also looked at heterogeneous teams, which are composed of robots that have different capabilities. Here we show a lifting and pushing combination, where the lifters are colored gray and the pushers are colored black. We observe a division of labor that emerges through training. The pushing robots are very effective at pushing objects along the walls, so they learn to focus on the objects that are near the walls. Lifting robots, on the other hand, are generally versatile, so they focus on the rest of the objects. We can see the division of labor more clearly through visualization of the movement trajectories. Here we can observe that the green pushing trajectories are mostly along the walls, whereas the blue lifting trajectories cover more of the center. The different robot types are able to learn specialized behaviors that complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. We also combine lifting robots with throwing robots, which can throw objects backwards. When we trained this combination, we saw another interesting division of labor emerge. Since throwing robots are very effective at throwing objects a long distance, they learn to focus on the faraway objects. In contrast, the lifting robots learn to focus on objects close to the receptacle, since the faraway objects will eventually get thrown to them by the throwing robots. To see this division of labor more clearly, we can again visualize the movement trajectories. We see that the green trajectories for the throwing robots cover the bottom left half, which is where faraway objects are. On the other hand, the blue trajectories for the lifting robots cover the top right half near the receptacle. This illustrates a synergistic division of labor, where each robot has learned how to best use its own unique capability to help the team succeed. Here we show teams of robots that were trained for the search and rescue task. In order to efficiently complete the task, the robots need to distribute themselves throughout the environment and divide up the work evenly. We see that they are indeed able to coordinate with each other and complete the task efficiently. And here we show the search and rescue policy running on real robots. We also visualize the search and rescue movement trajectories for policies trained with and without spatial intention maps. This allows us to qualitatively observe the efficiency enabled by intention maps. The robots trained without intention maps do not know each other's intentions, and as a result, they are not able to coordinate well and move much less efficiently. We now give a more detailed overview of our method. We use decentralized asynchronous execution with communicating agents. Here, robot 1 is currently choosing a new action. The other robots, which are all currently in motion, send their intentions as XY waypoints to robot 1. Then, robot 1 spatially encodes the intentions into a map, which we call the spatial intention map. In addition to the spatial intention map, our state representation also includes four other overhead maps, which encode useful information for the agent. All maps are spatially aligned with the visual observations. The state representation is input into a fully convolutional queue network, which outputs a dense queue value map. Then, the action with the highest queue value is selected and executed. One benefit of using a dense action space is that we can visualize action predictions by looking at the queue value maps. Here we examine a pair of scenarios where there are two robots. Both are trying to go towards the receptacle. In each scenario, we consider a different intention for the robot on the left, and then we look at the resulting queue value map of the robot on the right. 
In both scenarios, we see that the robot on the right chooses an action that avoids colliding with the other robot. Here is another pair of scenarios, this time with two doorways. In each scenario, we choose a different doorway for the robot that is holding an object. And then we look at how the Q-value map is affected for the other robot near the receptacle. In both cases, we see that a robot near the receptacle selects a doorway that is unoccupied. Here is a pair of scenarios with two rescue robots and two objects. In each scenario, we choose a different object for the top robot, and then we check the Q-value maps for the bottom robot. In both cases, the bottom robot selects the other object and avoids overlapping of efforts. For more details, please check out our project page, which also contains release code and additional video results.